Hello and welcome to Oathbreaking News, your Oathbreaker news source brought to you by the Signature Spellbomb. In this episode, we will be covering more 2021 core set previews and jumpstart spoiler season so far. This is part 4 of our spoiler series for Core 2021, and it has been exhausting to report on. In the future, once we are done with the spoiler season, we will be approaching spoilers very differently, so please look forward to that. If you want to check out the earlier videos in this series, I will be putting together a playlist. There will be a link in the description if you want to view all the cards that have been revealed so far. Just a quick reminder, if you like what we do here on the channel, then please help us out by like, sharing, and subscribing. Let's continue to look at the spoiled cards and how they are likely to affect the Oathbreaker format. I will try to keep the coverage brief and to the point. Thursday, June 11th, 2020, they revealed the following cards. Transmogrify costs 3 in a red, it's a sorcery. We exile target creature card. That creature's controller reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a creature card. That player puts that card onto the battlefield and then shuffles the rest into their library. This is a very similar effect to Chaos Portal. It's interesting removal, but it's a little expensive for what it does, and it's hilarious when something like this backfires on you. Also, this card could be used as an alternative to Polymorph in red if you wanted to build a shenanigan-y type of deck. Next we have Talarian Kraken for 4 and 2 blue. It's a 4-6. Whenever you draw a card, you may pay 1. If you do, you may tap or untap target creature. This screams combo piece. We have Duress for 1 black as a reprint. Target punt reveals her hand. You choose a non-creature non-land card from it. That player discards that card. Ranger's Guile for 1 green is an instant and a reprint. Target creature with control gets plus 1 plus 1, gains hexproof till end of turn. This is great one-shot protection for a key creature. Again, probably more important in EDH than Oathbreaker. We have another reprint in Defiant Strike. It costs 1 white, and target creature gets plus 1 plus 0 till end of turn, and we draw a card. Liliana Standard Bearer costs 2 and a black. It's a zombie knight, and it's a 3-1 with flash. When it enters the battlefield, we draw X cards, where X is the number of creatures that died under our control this turn. Again, this card screams an aristocrat-style strategy, most likely in Orzhov, but we've also seen some cards that would support that in Demir in this core set. Liliana's Devotee costs 2 and a black. It's a 2-3 human warlock. It says zombies we control get plus 1, plus 0. At the beginning of our end step, if a creature died this turn, we may pay one in black. If we do, we create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. Rambunctious Mutt, another one of our pupperoos in this set, costs 3 and 2 white. It's a dog creature with power and toughness 3-4. When it enters the battlefield, we destroy target artifact or enchantment on opponent controls. Liliana Stewart, for one black, is a 1-2 zombie. We can tap it and sacrifice it. Target opponent discards a card. Activate this ability any time we could cast a sorcery. Enthralling Horde, for three and two blue, is a control magic type spell that we can only cast on a creature that is tapped. Interesting. Not sure how often that'll be useful. Miscast costs one blue. It's an instant. We counter target instant or sorcery spell unless its controller pays three. This is just good interruption to protect your board state. It is too bad that it really only helps you when your opponents are tapped out. Gormand cost 4 and 2 black. It's a 5-5 demon. As additional cost to cast the spell, you have to uh, sack one of your creatures. He has flying and trample. And when he enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a creature. Feline Sovereign costs 2 and a green. It's a 2-3 cat. Other cats we control get plus 1, plus 1, and have protection from dogs. Whenever one or more cats we control deal combat damage to a player, we destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment that player controls. Seeing all these cat creatures really makes one want to build a white-green Ajani deck. Just feels on theme. Truffle Snout costs 2 and a green. It's a 2-2 boar. When it enters the battlefield, we choose one. We can either put a 1-1 counter on it or gain 4 life. Wirewood Scourge costs X and a green, and it's a 0-0 Hydra creature. 
it enters the battlefield with X 1 1 counters, and whenever one or more 1 1 counters we put on another non Hydra creature we control, we put a 1 1 counter on it. That's really interesting for a 1 1 counter strategy decks. I can't wait to see how people play it. Tempered Veteran for 1 in a white is a 1 2 human knight. We can tap 1 white mana and tap it to put a 1 1 counter on target creature with a 1 1 counter already on it. Or we can pay 4 and 2 white and tap it to put a 1-1 counter on target creature. Conclave Mentor for a green and a white is a 2-2 centaur cleric. If one or more 1-1 counter would be put on a creature we control, we put that many 1-1 counters plus 1 on the creature instead. When it dies, we gain life equal to its total power. This is a very interesting card with that hydra as I don't know if it will cause extra triggers. It'll be interesting to see how people will combo with all these 1 1 counter cards we've mentioned so far in this video. Thieves Guild Enforcer costs 1 black. It's a 1 1 human rogue with flash. One enters the battlefield, or another rogue enters the battlefield under our control. Each opponent mills two cards. As long as an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, this enforcer gets plus 2 plus 1 and death touch. Celestial Enforcer costs 2 and a white. It's a 2 3 human cleric. We can pay 1 in white and tap it. Tap target creature. We can only activate this ability if we control a creature with flying. Sabertooth Mauler costs 3 and a green. It's a 3-3 three, three cat. At the beginning of our end step, if a creature died this turn, we put a 1-1 one, one counter on Sabertooth Mauler and untap it. Really feeling that a Johnny deck. Next, we have Spore Web Weaver, a 2 and a green, 1-4 spider creature with reach and hexproof from blue. Whenever it deals damage, we gain 1 life and create a 1-1 one, one Saperlink creature. Seburai Talzudi Caravaner is a legendary human shaman, power 2-3. With haste, we can pay 1 and another creature we control, power 2 or less, can't be blocked this turn. We can pay 1 red and tap it and discard our hand until end of turn. Whenever a creature you control with power 2 or less deals combat damage to a player, we draw a card. She's very interesting as she'll allow us to get a lot of combat damage through. I could see her being in quite a few different decks that either give Trample or Haste off of our static ability Planeswalkers out of War of the Spark. And the ability to draw cards to refill your hand in red or red-white decks is really helpful. Now let's move on to the cards that were spoiled on June 12th, 2020. Glorious Anthem is a reprint that costs 1 in 2 white. It says creatures we control get plus 1 plus 1. This is an excellent card for white weenie decks. Hooded Blight Fang costs 2 in a black. It's a 1-4 snake with death touch. Whenever a creature you control with death touch attacks, each opponent loses 1 life and you gain 1 life. Whenever a creature you control with death touch deals damage to a planeswalker, destroy that planeswalker. This creature really feels like it wants to be in a Veraska the Swarm's Eminence deck. I'll certainly be updating my deck list at some point to add it. It just is amazing value. Colossal Dreadmaw is getting a reprint. It's a 4 and 2 green 6-6 six, six dinosaur with trample. Rouse Reed for 2 and a green is a creature enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, we draw two cards and discard a card. And the enchanted creature gets plus 1, plus 1 and flying. Library Larcenist costs 2 in a blue. It's a 1-2 Morphoke Rogue. Whenever it attacks, we draw a card. Animal Sanctuary, which I think is one of the most hilarious cards in the set, is a land that taps for colorless mana, or we can pay 2 and tap it and put a 1-1 one -one counter on target bird, cat, dog, goat, ox, or snake. On a level, this reminds me of the card Swarm Yard, printed way back when, that specifically regenerated insects ver and vermin. Griffin Errory, for one in a white, is an enchantment. At the beginning of our end step, if we have gained three or more life in a turn, we create a 2-2 white griffin creature token with flying. Silvermote Ghoul, for two in a black, is a 3-1. At the beginning of our end step, if we've gained three or more life this turn, return the ghoul from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Pay one in a black and sacrifice the ghoul to draw a card. That's really interesting. I love that it has this sacrifice to draw a card and this put back into play effect printed on it. I think this is going to get a lot of use in the decks that want it. This combined with Griffin Airy, the previous card, feels like we're going to see some really fun Orzhov decks, most likely based around Soren. 
Speaker of the Heavens costs one white. It's a 1-1 one, one with Vigilance and Lifelink. If we tap it, we can create a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying. We can only activate that ability if we have at least seven or more life than our starting life total, and only at any time we could cast a sorcery. I feel like that's a really low bar of entry for a lot of the decks that are playing hard life gain. I really do like this card. I'm a little bummed it's printed at rare and may not make a lot of my budget decks. Finishing Blow costs four and a black. It says destroy target creature planeswalker. Wish it was a little cheaper. Still good. Terror of the Peak for three and two red is a five four worth flying. Spells your opponent's cast. The target Terror of the Peaks costs an additional three life to cast. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Terror of the Peak steals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. This is wonderful. It's basically a pandemonium that our opponents are afraid to remove. If they try to remove this creature, they'll lose life. But if they don't, they're going to lose life every time you play a creature. I can't wait to see what decks make use of that. I don't know if it'll be small goblin decks or people running old school ball lightnings. Discontinue costs three and three blue. It's an instant. As long as it's your turn, this spell costs two and two blue less to cast and the turn. That's very interesting. There are times you might want to skip over effects that could hurt you, or you might just want to stop a phase before something bad happens to you, like just end combat before the damage is dealt. This could make for an interesting signature spell, if cheaper. I think it takes very specific use to make use of it on your turn. Battle Rattle Shaman for three and a red is a reprint. It's a 2-2 Goblin Shaman. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may have target creature get plus two plus oh. Insubstantiate costs one and a blue. It's an instant. We return target spell or creature to its owner's hand. This is kind of like a counter spell and a bounce spell, so it's very interesting removal, but it's not permanent removal, so I'll let you be the judge of how you want to play that. There are times you also want to bounce your own creatures for extra enter the battlefield effects. Nambi Esteem Speaker. Costs one white and one blue. She's a 2-1 legendary human cleric with flash. When she enters the battlefield, you may return another target creature you control to its owner's hand. If you do, you gain life equal to that creature's converted mana cost. If you pay one, a blue and a white, and tap, you can discard a legendary creature to draw two cards. That seems really fun. I do think there was another legendary matter creature in one of the previous sets that will protect your legendary creatures. I'm also very happy to see some of these older legend cards get printed um, in the new sets. Demonic Embrace costs one and two black. It's an enchantment. The enchanted creature gets plus three, plus one, and has flying and is a demon in addition to its other types. You can cast Demonic Embrace from your graveyard by paying three life and discarding card in addition to paying its other costs. This is very interesting. It's kind of like the escape spells we got. It's nice to be able to replay something that's going to be a huge boost to creature and give it evasion. If you're in a tribal deck for demons, that could also be really good. So I really do like this card and its flavor. Canopy Stalker costs three and a green. It's a 4-2 cat. It has to block each turn if able. When Canopy Stalker dies, we gain one life for each creature that died this turn. Kurvek, the Spiteful, costs two and two black. He's a 3-2 legendary human warlock that says other creatures get minus one, minus one till end of turn. He is a legendary creature from older school magic, and that goes way back to when Teferi made his island disappear. He is related to some of the other legends in the set. If you're really interested in that, I suggest checking out the Magic Historian's channel. He's done a lot of stuff uh, concerning that storyline. It's amazing. It does relate to Magita the Diplomat. Falconer Adept costs three and a white. It's a 2-3 human soldier. Whenever it attacks, create a one white bird creature token with flying that's tapped and attacking. Watcher of the Spheres costs one white and one blue. It's a 2-2 bird wizard with flying. Creature spells with flying cost one less to cast. Whenever another creature with flying enters the battlefield under your control, it gets plus one, plus one till end of turn. It's nice to have a new bird lord that's kind of faster and effective to cast. In Oathbreaker, since we can only run one, it's going to have very limited use to us. Still good, though. I mean, it's the closest thing we're going to get to ramp in blue or white most of the time. 
Finally, we have Brash Taunter. It costs 4 in wet red. It's a 1-1 goblin with indestructible. Whenever Brash Taunter is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to target opponent. We can pay 2 in a red, and we can force it to fight another target creature. Brash Taunter is basically a tribal red stuffy doll, which is an amazing card with a lot of combos around it. Being able to play this and Stuffy Doll in the same deck will help stabilize the deck. I do have a friend that's working on something like that right now. I think this card's just going to be a lot of fun to see what people do with it. So having said that, that's the last card I'm covering today. We will be returning with additional spoiler season videos, so please be on the lookout. Having said that, I'd like to take a moment here to talk about my favorite local gaming store. This is not a paid promotion. I just want to support my friends at Mythic Games. Mythic Games is a gaming store for all ages in Littleton, Colorado. They have an amazing staff that always helps me with any request I have when I enter the store. They stock hundreds of games and are willing to ship them directly to you. They've always provided me the best assistance and I have when I've been working on any deck list that I need to play that same night. And they've also helped me fill orders for cards and for games via Facebook, Messenger, and Twitter. When they haven't had um, a certain product I'm looking for, they've always taken the time to try to find a suitable replacement for me, which I really appreciate. I can't tell you how much I like that. I will put all of their information in the description if you're interested in shopping from my favorite local gaming store. Now that we have provided you with news and our opinion, give us your thoughts in the comments below. What product this year are you most excited about? And is there a particular card from this new set? particularly from today's spoilers, that you feel you absolutely need, please let us know. Also, this episode is in a slightly different format, so let me know what you think. If you enjoyed this video and want to support the channel, then please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can be one of the first to see our oath-breaking news stories. We have merchandise. If you want to show your signature Spellbomb Pride, please see our link in the description. Be sure to check out our new Run with the Booster Pack merchandise. Sorry, I just felt like giving it a flare there. If you want to support the channel directly, consider giving at patreon.com slash signature spellbomb or paypal.me slash signature spellbomb. Again, a huge thank you to my viewers. I can't do this without you guys, and I wouldn't. Thanks again, and I hope I don't see you in the headlines.